Hi, I'm Joe James. This video is the second video in our image filters series for Java. Now we're going to try and write most of these filters by hand, manually, pixel by pixel, using the buffered image library. And in the first video in this series, we really just loaded an image and displayed it to the screen. In this video, we're going to convert a color image to a grayscale image. Now you may not want to convert a lot of your image to grayscale. However, for image recognition and extracting features for an, from an image using machine learning, uh, that's an important function because we don't need all the color data. So the first step we take applying machine learning functions to an image is usually to convert it to a grayscale image so there's a little less data to work with. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you two different methods for converting an image to a grayscale image. And I'll post the code as usual at the link below on my GitHub site. You can download that code, you can run it, play around with it, edit it, uh, it's yours to work with and learn from it. Now in the next video in this series, we're gonna continue on with additional image filters that I hope will be beneficial for you. We're gonna use the same code that we used in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can download that from the GitHub site. I have that link posted below. We, in the first video, we loaded an image and printed it, displayed it on the screen that is, and we're up to here. So now in this video we're going to have two different methods for converting that image to a grayscale. The first one we'll call to grayscale2 uh, to convert an image to grayscale and we'll do that pixel by pixel using the buffered image library. And I'll show you how to do that here now. So this is our function call. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the function. We're going to write a function. So our function header is a uh, public static buffered image. We're going to pass in a buffered image called img and we're going to return a buffered image to grayscale2. And then I just have a simple print statement uh, from my command console converting to grayscale2 so we know what function call we're at. And then in between here, this print statement and the return statement, we're going to have some code that does the conversion. But at the end, we're going to return our new gray image. First thing we need to do is create a new buffered image called gray image. That's the one we're going to return. And we're going to make it exactly the same width and height as the one we passed in, this image. So we get the width, we get the height of the image that we passed in, and we create a new, basically a blank canvas a buffered image called gray image. It doesn't have anything on it yet. Uh, and we're going to set it, set it up in the um, byte gray color space. Next we're going to use a few variables in this function and they're going to be integers. So we have RGB which is zero, red, green, and blue values which are all also zero. Now these uh, red, green, and blue values all range from zero which is black to 255 which is white. And then we're going to have nested for loops. Now an image is a grid of pixels, x and y values if you want to refer to them as that, rows and columns of pixels. So we're going to iterate through the height and through the width using x and y as our variables inside this loop. So this is a nested for loops to iterate through each pixel in the image one by one. As we get to each pixel, the first thing we're going to do is grab the RGB value of that pixel. So we do image.getRGB. That's a buffered image uh, function. Get RGB gives us the RGB value of the pixel at x, comma y coordinates. And we cast it as an int. We shouldn't need to. It's supposed to return an int already, but I like to cast it as an integer just to make sure it's an int. And that is going to be assigned to our variable RGB. So we're going to, each time we're through this nested for loop, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is grab this RGB value. And then from that, we're going to separate out the red, the green, and the blue. Um, it's a little tricky to do this. So what we're doing is a bitwise shift operation. We're ending it with FF so that we can just get the rightmost byte. So the blue is the rightmost byte, the um, green is the second rightmost byte, and the red is the third rightmost byte. 
And then the last rightmost byte is the alpha channel, which is transparency. We're not using that. I'm going to leave that alone. So this is how we get the R, G, and B values from each pixel. And then we have a formula to take the average of those. And again, we cast that as an int, although we shouldn't need to. R plus G plus B. Now this is just a straight uh, average. You can also use a weighted average, which I put here, I commented it out, but you can also use a weighted average because your eye doesn't actually see, doesn't have the same sensitivity to different colors. So if you want to use a weighted average according to what uh, opticians claim is the, the, the correct weighted average for what your eye actually perceives, you can use this weighted average. I found it doesn't make any difference. So, And then we're going to um, overwrite this weighted average value with the shifted values. So the first thing we did with our RGB when we grabbed it, we did the shift and and to get to break out the RG and B. Here we're packing those, we're repacking them into the RGB value and writing that back to the gray image. So the set RGB it takes an X and a Y coordinate, which is exactly the same one that we have in our nested for loops. The one that we got the RGB value from with get RGB. Well, we're going to set RGB now using this calculated RGB value. So this is the blue, this is the green, and this is the red. Okay, So we've got one byte for each one of these colors plus the alpha value, which like I said, we're, getting, we're going to leave at 255, which is um, fully opaque. And then we're going to um, set RGB equal to that and write it to the gray image. And then we're going to skip on to the next pixel. So that's it. Each time we iterate through this nested for loop, we're going to do one pixel. So let's run that at our command console and see what we get. We'll compile it and run it. So here's our original image in color, and here's our black and white. Now, my own conversion here kind of comes out dark to me, which is not hard to fix. However, I don't understand why it comes out this dark to begin with. Um, it's easy, easy to adjust the color brighter, but uh, uh, that's our first manual method for converting a color image to a grayscale. Let's take a look at the other method, which we'll just call to grayscale. It uses a method within the buffered image library. So I'll show you how to use that. It's a little easier to implement, and I think it does a, a better result, which is the most important thing. So, so first we'll change this to grayscale. I'm going to leave to grayscale 2 here, so you can see this in my code. That's the manual method. Maybe you can improve on it. So we have a function called to grayscale. It, takes a buffered image called IMG again. It returns a buffered image. And we're going to start out again with a simple print statement. And then, of course, like I said, we want to return a, gray, a grayscale image. So we'll call it gray image, the same as we did in the previous function. Now, again, we start out just like in the, the to grayscale 2. We start out the same way. We create a buffered image called gray image. It's a new buffered image. We set it the width and height to exactly the same as the current image, the color one that we're passed in. And our color space that we use is um, type byte gray. So again, that's the same. Uh, but our trick here is that we're going to use this graphics library. And we create a graphics object called G. For our gray image, we get the graphics. And then we're going to overwrite onto this gray image, basically a grayscale version of this image. So it's just a few lines of code and it's pretty simple. This is really it. We get a handle on this gray image here and then we draw onto it our color image with basically no color. So it's, it's, it's drawing onto it this image, but it's doing it in this color space, the type byte gray color space and then we can dispose of it, of the graphics object, after we're done with it. 
and we return our gray image. So the, the code here is very simple. Um, the work is actually all being done by this graphics object library. Let me save that and we'll run this at the command prompt here. And I like the result better. This is our black and white image and that's the color image. So the black and white image comes out a little brighter and uh, better definition. So I'm going to use this for the remainder of the video series. Again, like I said, I'll leave uh, both code snippets in there so that you can see and experiment with them. And I welcome your comments. In this video we covered how to convert a color image to a grayscale image. That's an essential function because we're going to use the grayscale image for most of our uh, most of our image recognition functions as we go forward. And definitely we need that for our license plate recognition. If we want to try and pull features out of the image, usually we don't need color data to do that. So the first thing we do to reduce the amount of data we're dealing with is to convert it to a grayscale image. So our next video, we're going to continue on.